Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5pm Pacific Time in the US, 10am in Australia and 1am in the UK. Good to see you Sniper Echo, how's things buddy? I'm very well thanks Sniper, yep, no I'm good. Catching up on some sleep and the workload starting to die down a little bit, so that's all cool. Unfortunately, my NBN connection has been pushed back by at least three months, unfortunately, so that's a bit annoying. I've been a bit annoyed about that. It's a government run national broadband network, though, so what can you do? Anything that the government do is always, always takes a lot of time and is always uh, over schedule, so yeah. Three months, yeah, I know, at least it. They actually don't even give you a specific date. They just say things like um, up to another six months. So I'm assuming, I'm hoping for at least three months. We'll have to wait and see. Sorry, my phone just went off over there. So yeah, um, but I'm, I'm looking at uh, getting in, using an alternative source until then anyway. At the moment, I stream on a second internet connection anyway to Twitch. Um, I, I may um, up my bandwidth allowance on that connection and... Uh, then I can start looking at what I will, if I want to start streaming at 1080p or at a higher bandwidth or whatever. I don't want to go too high bandwidth though for you guys that can't watch the stream. There's no point <laughs> if I do that and you can't watch. So, uh, but I may be able to up the uh, stream resolution still to 1080p, um, but just not push the upload bandwidth quite so hard. I was going to uh, upload at 6,000 kilobits a second, but. I may just knock it back a bit so it doesn't go too high for you guys that can't watch. Although, I have noticed that our um, transcoding options seems to have stuck on, on the stream. So, it, hopefully most times if you can't watch at the uh, source resolution, you guys with the lower bandwidth could probably knock it back down. Because our transcodings, they disappeared one day last week, but they're back again. So, they're not guaranteed for affiliates anyway. They're only guaranteed for partners. Um, just depending on the, the uh, n how heavy the Twitch network is being used as to whether they give it to us or not. Most times they do, but yeah. But we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, Sniper says, yeah, 6K would probably kill it. But with transcoding, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, see, the plan of action was with the NBN, uh, I was going to stream at six, when, when the NBN was connected to my home here, I was going to start streaming at 6,000 kilobits a second and up the um, quality of the stream to 1080p from 720p. Um, now, my only uh, what concern with that is that, yeah, transcoding is not guaranteed for affiliates and I'm an affiliate, not a partner. So uh, only partners get guaranteed transcoding. And if I upped it to 6,000 kilobytes a second and Twitch was having a heavy server day and didn't give my stream transcoding, a lot of you guys may have problems watching the stream. So even when the NBN comes, I don't think I will push it to 6,000 just to be on the safe side. At the moment, I stream at about 3,000. Um, and I may up that to maybe four or four and a half thousand and then start streaming at 1080p, at least until the, um, either when the NBN arrives or like I said, I'll look at the, uh, the connection I use to stream on at the moment. It can actually go higher than I stream on now. It's just a bandwidth limitation. Uh, the uh, the allowance that the company gives me for how much uh, get how many gigabytes a month I get to to use that's more of a problem at the moment. Uh, so the answer is we need to get you partnered. Sniper says yes, that's right, guys. Get me partnered. Uh, get me partnered, and I'd, I'll increase my stream days. <laughs> But at the moment, yeah, uh, and I'm happy to be an affiliate. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful Twitch have the affiliate program. That's that's really cool. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm still thinking, mulling all of that over now that the NBN has been pushed back by three months and I've got to sort of work out whether I'm going to, um, how I'm going to tackle that until I do get the NBN. And I will be getting it. It's just I've got to wait for this government, for the government to pull their finger out and uh, organise themselves a little bit better. They're doing the entire country, so uh, all of Australia, including Tasmania. Uh, so it's a big job. And there's a lot of, like we, the population of Australia is like uh, 26 million, I think. So there's 20, at least, we'll say half that in homes that have to be connected up. So there's a lot to do. And it's taking them a lot longer than they anticipated. Most people aren't gonna get it until the year 2020. Uh, so I'm lucky that they've started working in my area at all, I guess. 
<laughs> anyway, I'll look into it all, I'll let you guys know, and I won't start streaming at a uh, any quality that's higher that you can't watch, so don't worry. Uh, and Wednesdays, I was going to go back to Wednesdays streaming again, and I still intend to do that. Uh, again, I'm just going to wait until I can work out what I want to do with my net connection, and then I'll decide whether uh, when we'll go back to doing Wednesdays as well. Uh, but again, I'll let you guys know ahead of time, so don't worry. And I'll be posting to my Twitter page at Bill Does 3D uh, or, or, the, or any changes. So I'll let you guys know. Uh, you may notice that my mic is a little bit louder now as well. <laughs> How long have I been streaming, guys? And I've just realized that I run my mic through Adobe Audition before I pipe it into OBS to clean it up and to, um, to knock out any background noise. Yeah, it, Sniper says, yeah, it's important to have some chill time. And it is. I, and I work full time as well, guys. So um, I'd love to stream seven days a week for you, but I can't because I have to work. <laughs> and uh, it, and when my schedule gets really busy like it did, and I had to drop Wednesdays because my workload was just too much. And my workload is starting to ease down again now. Um, but it's just working out my internet connection and all that sort of stuff. Uh, back to the mic, yes. You may notice it's a little bit louder on stream now because uh, what I do is I pipe my mic through Adobe Audition and then pipe it into OBS. And I use Audition just to clean up any background noise and to uh, even out my levels and all that sort of stuff. And I noticed that I had OB, uh, Audition set to negative three in the decibels and it really should go back up to zero. So what I've done is I've increased it back up by point by plus three decibels. So it should be a little bit louder for you guys. Um, I noticed actually I had a comment on my YouTube channel, one of my videos that I uploaded there from the stream. Uh, a guy said that he found um, it, it. He's a non-English speaker, so he has trouble with English to begin with. And he said that he had trouble hearing some words that I was saying and he wanted me to increase my mic volume. Uh, so I reviewed my streams on YouTube and sure enough, yeah. When you upload to YouTube, YouTube uses a, an audio algorithm that uh, sort of like um, adjust your volume so you, when you go to different YouTube videos one is not too much louder than the other one they try and uh, normalize the volume level and they just it does that automatically when you upload a video and that was making it even worse so I did a test over the weekend uh, the new uploads to YouTube will be at a good volume to hear me in uh, so it should all be good not that it was ever bad but you just had to turn your volume up a bit higher uh, on YouTube to, to hear me but it should all be good now. So yeah, just for you guys, if you if, if you hear me a little bit louder today, it's because I've adjusted my mic back up to where it should be, uh, reaching zero decibels instead of minus three decibels. Okay, so let's get into what we're doing. Uh, we're working on our Unreal level in 4.17.1. Now, when I um, opened up Unreal this morning, there was an update available. <laughs> I'm shouting at you now, our sniper. <laughs> Turn your volume down. <laughs> um, I, I noticed when I uh, started up Unreal this morning that there was a an update, but I didn't install it. So it may be a 0 0.2 update or something like that, I think. Um, I won't do that until at the end of the week after tomorrow's stream. Uh, so we're still on 4.17.1 for today and tomorrow. And then I'll look at what this update is that Unreal are, are talking about. Uh, I do know they've been previewing 4.18. And there's some cool new additions in that version of the engine. Yeah, it's a point to update. I thought so. I thought it was, uh, yeah, a hotfix update. Yeah. Uh, but I do know they're previewing, previewing 4.18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sniper says there's 4.18 release. Yep. That one is the preview though. They're not, they haven't pushed that out to stable yet. So, and I don't generally work on builds that aren't pushed to the main branch. So I'll wait for them to push that out. They'll probably do that in the next few weeks more than likely just in time for us to start using their new cloth physics because I've got to start bringing some cloth um, and uh, objects into the um, building yeah I know yeah sniper says 4.18 has stable cloth sim yeah I noticed that in the build notes they um that they moved it from experimental into the main um, branch so into the main build of the engine the new uh, cloth physics and that they're using so we will be using that when I bring my uh, cloth flags and that type of thing into the building. So they've done it They've done it just in time for us to finish off this project because the, the uh, flags and um, 
the rugs and stuff I'm placing on the wall, which use cloth physics, will um, I'll be bringing in at the end with our plants and our furniture. So, yeah, just in time for us to use it before the project is finished, which is good news. Uh, so we'll look at all of that when we bring our cloth objects in. Uh, basically, the, the, what they've done is they've removed um, Apex Physics, which is the NVIDIA one, the one that uh, NVIDIA developed. Uh, so you, basically what you had to used to have to do, in, if you're a Max user or Maya user, you used to have to install this, the, the NVIDIA Physics plugin to create your physics objects before you exported them into Unreal. Uh, you don't have to do that anymore. It's all built into the engine now. So you don't. You just export your mesh and you can set your physics up inside of the Unreal Engine. So that's great for people that didn't want to install the N NVIDIA physics um, plugin or couldn't perhaps because NVIDIA hadn't created a plugin for their 3D program. So I'll probably leave uh, NVIDIA physics installed here in Mac simply because it has other uses apart from Unreal. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it installed in case I want to use it for some other project in Max or something or in V-Ray. Sniper says, uh, did that also mean that the physics wouldn't work on AMD with that special setup? I don't know. I've never used an AMD card. I've always been an NVIDIA guy. Um, the, the, the game studio I worked at, they used AMD cards in their machines when we were doing our creation for the game. And they were always having problems with them, so I always steered clear of an uh, AMD but um, yeah I don't know I don't know if that affected it. it it may have because like I said the uh, NVIDIA Apex physics is made by NVIDIA so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, there was some sort of incompatibility between NVIDIA and AMD when it came to physics but now that it's built into Unreal it shouldn't be an issue and that could be one of the reasons that Unreal that Epic decided to put it in the engine instead of relying on a third party to, to do your physics stuff and it's better for you guys, or for anyone actually, that works with Unreal because you don't need another plugin now for, for your 3D program. You can just do it all in Unreal itself. So it makes everybody's life easier, really. Uh, having said that, though, like I said, I, I will keep the NVIDIA plugin for physics installed in Max because it has other uses apart from Unreal. If you want to do physics stuff inside of Max, if you want to render out a cinematic or something in Max, it's, you can, it's still good to, to use uh, NVIDIA physics. Uh, yeah, although uh, Max has physics built into it as well, I think, that's not NVIDIA, but NVIDIA is a, a good tool set to use. So if you've got an NVIDIA card and you use a 3D program that they make a plugin for the NVIDIA physics plugin for, uh, install it because it is good. Okay, so yes, we were working on our uh, skylight and I did rebuild the, um, the lighting and just see, you can see the difference that rebuilding the lighting makes to the interior. Um, we'll jump up here into our skylight so we can get a better look. So when you rebuild the lighting, it really does make quite a dramatic difference to the look of the interior. Oh, that's true actually. Sniper says there's also the NVIDIA Physics standalone editor. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but that's very true. There is a standalone uh, editor in NVIDIA you can use as well. But again, you're going to need an NVIDIA card to use it. I don't think it'll run on AMD. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Like I said, I don't use AMD, but um, it wouldn't surprise me to learn that you can't run it on an AMD card because, you know, they, they're competitors, those two companies. So, uh, yeah. So but rebuilding the lighting um, really does make quite a dramatic uh, difference to the look of the interior. And that's why when I start working on an area, I always say to you guys, oh, sort of ignore the lighting until I do a rebuild because it really does change the look. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Sniper says he's not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, it, it may work on AMD, but it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't. There was a time where NVIDIA would, um, and they, I think they still do, if you have an AMD, if you want to run SLI, when SLI was bigger years ago, you know, where you run two video cards together, you use one for maybe physics and one for um, for your game. Uh, NVIDIA used to disable the other card if it detected an AMD card in your machine. So it's not beyond uh, NVIDIA to to make it so if you've got an AMD card in your, in your machine, they're not going to let you use it. If you've got that with an NVIDIA card, a lot of people are using the AMD card for physics and um, 
NVIDIA for gaming and there used to be a tweak or a, a special driver you could download to make sure that they both work together because NVIDIA went out of their way to make sure it wouldn't. But that was years ago and SLI now has changed completely with uh, DirectX 12. The new way that DirectX 12 handles multiple graphics cards has completely changed so uh, I, I don't know whether that's still the case. But it was the case. Uh, I, I don't approve of companies doing that sort of thing. I think if uh, a person buys both video cards, they should be able to use both video cards from different brands. They'd pay for them. It's, it shouldn't be up to a third party company like NVIDIA to say, no, you're not going to be able to. You, you've given your money to NVIDIA, so, you know, they're not losing anything. They're just making it so that you, can, you couldn't use an AMD card with an NVIDIA card. So it was a bit, a, a bit of an underhanded thing for them to do anyway. Yeah. And it's one of my concerns with Microsoft and Direct uh, Windows 10, actually. Um, I, I don't like when you do an update, like a major update. There's a new update coming to Windows 10, which is the Creators Update Fall Edition or whatever they're calling it. The, the second update to the Creators Edition, which is happening in October, around the end of October, I think. Uh, with those major updates, if when you do the update, if Windows finds it, a program on your machine that it doesn't like, it will uninstall it and I don't like that. I don't want my operating system or Microsoft deciding what is on my machine. You know, it's it's my machine. I decide. <laughs> um, that, that and all of the tracking that's built into Windows 10. But anyway, that's a different story. I don't really like that either. You know, how they're doing all that data collection on you. But they gave it away as a free update if you have Windows 7 or 8. So I guess you can't complain too much. Anyway, that's enough bitching about NVIDIA and Microsoft. Yeah, it's, it's not right, Sniper Wrecker, I agree, it's really not. <laughs> these are your computer, it's your computer, they sh these companies have, should have no right over what you can do with it. Once you've bought it, it's yours, not theirs. <clears throat> anyway, at least I haven't been bitching about uh, ZBrush this time. That, that's my my, my go-to if, if I want to bitch about something it's the interface in ZBrush but we're not going to be talking about that uh, we're going to get straight back into Unreal here <laughs> although I love ZBrush don't get me wrong I do I love it it's a great program I just don't like the interface <laughs> you just said it did you <laughs> Uh, and now that uh, Autodesk have um, improved 3D Studio Max to not crash, I don't have any problems with them either. So, but for, for the love of all that's good, guys, if you are a Max 2017 user, please make sure you do the updates because otherwise your machine, the program will crash and you'll have to, and I used to have to restart my entire machine when that happened. So, but 2018 has been great. 3D Studio Max 2018, I've had no problems. Uh, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start moving on to the lower floor. I just want to go over this upper floor to make sure that there's nothing uh, that I still need to do. I don't think there is. I think everything's pretty much done up here. Uh, apart from um, these side rooms, actually, I just want to put some uh, plaster work up here on the top of the ceiling, and we're just going to borrow the plaster work we've got out here. So. Um, now, some areas up here are a little dark, like we can barely see the side of this banister, so I will be introducing a little bit more lighting up here when we come when it comes time for us to place furniture and plants. Um, I'll look at it then. Like, and when I, what I mean by lighting is I'll, I'll, I'll place some lamps or something, standing lamps or desk lamps that can illuminate areas a bit better. But we'll play with all of that, like I said, once we're finished doing the interior and we start decorating the building for lack of a better word I guess uh, so placing plants and uh, furniture and that sort of thing uh, again we're not going to be fully furnishing this building we're only going to be adding like hero pieces of furniture here and there simply for time because we do want to get it done by Christmas um, and uh, yeah but mainly for time really we'll just place enough pieces of furniture to make the building look um, lived in and attractive and then we'll look at our final lighting pass then as well. But the only section we have left off up on the top, upper floor here is um, 
the ceiling in these two side rooms on either side of our main room in here. Uh, so we'll get that done. And then all I want to do for this room over here, because I'm going to keep these doors closed, I'm not going to furnish this room at all. All I'm going to do is place the window frames in and place curtains. I'm not even going to place any plaster work on the walls. And I'm only doing that so that if we, when we're doing our cinematic outside here, uh, and our camera may pan up towards the the top floor, we can't see in there. So that's why I'm placing curtains. So it's, it's mainly really for, um, for during our cinematic when our camera flies around the building, just to hide the fact that we've got nothing going on in there, in that upper room. So they're the sort of, I think they're the chores we'll tackle today. And then we are pretty much ready to move on to our lower floor here. Well, where are we? I'm getting lost. Uh, here. We've only got this little room through here and then the main, the back section through here to, to finish doing the main uh, interior sections. Then we move on to furniture and then we uh, set up our cameras and then we create our cinematic and we are done with this project. So a little while longer yet, we're gonna, we're gonna place the plants as well, but yeah. So let's do that. Let's um, let's grab this plaster work. And we're just going to move it into our ceiling cavities up here. Uh, I may just turn um, unlit on here just for the moment so I can see better what I'm doing. Or so I can better see. Let's speak proper English, shall we? I do remember, guys, though, if you've got any questions, anything you're not sure about, you're new to my channel or anything like that, please feel free to... Pop into chat and ask me. I'm happy to help if I can. Uh, yeah, so please feel free to pop in and ask if you've got a question about anything or anything you're not sure about. Um, if you just want to watch me work, then that's completely fine. Like I said, many times when I watch guys on Twitch, there's, uh, I don't really feel like talking or chatting, so I don't go into chat. I just watch. Let me get up here. Okay. Just wondering what that was, and that's just the top of this uh, plaster work. I thought it might have been part of the ceiling and it wasn't big enough. Ignore me. Okay, let's duplicate this again. Uh, now, I'm just going for this, this decorative sort of geometrical pattern for our plaster work here. I'm not going to be using this decorative plaster in here. I want to keep that section of the room more unique, so I'm not going to reuse any of that only going to be used in that room. Have you decided, Sniper, if you're going to um, get sponsored? You were talking about being offered a sponsorship for the game that you're making to send it to that expo. Have you made any decisions yet? Just curious. Okay, let's do one more duplicate. You haven't made a decision yet on it? Yep. Take your time. You don't want to make any any rash decisions in regard to any any IP you guys create yourselves. Um, it's worth, you know, uh, when you're making a game and you have an idea for a game, that is your IP, and IP is very valuable. If it's good IP, that is. If it's a, if it's a good story or a good game, uh, it's, it's, it's very valuable to publishers. So um, don't rush any sort of decisions. Oh, I forgot to duplicate it. Let me just undo that. Uh, so yeah, it, it's worth taking your time and making sure that whatever you decide to do is um, be of best interest to you. Uh, Sniper says, lots of work to be done before you consider it playable, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I, I, a lot of people, a Sniper will know, but a lot of people don't really appreciate just how much work goes into making a game. 
they always assume it's something uh, similar, sim- easy and simple to do, and it's really not. It takes in a huge amount of work uh, by many, many people to, to make a game, uh, which is why uh, you should never be too hard on guys that make bad games because they don't intend to make a bad game. It just... You, you, you can't appreciate just how much work goes into making a game. There's a lot of work. Uh, Sniper says, uh, I've had three game publishers on the phone this week and not sure how exactly, not sure how exactly, but word has got out about, oh, really? Well, that's cool. Bit of publicity is never a bad thing, Sniper. Uh, so if they're, um, if word's gotten out, then that's okay, so long as you're not giving away too many of your game secrets as to what it is. Because you don't want someone ripping it or, or, you know, making a copy of whatever you're doing before you get a chance to actually publish. Because that can be a problem too. And that's generally why uh, game companies will make you sign NDAs. They don't want it to leak out what the game is going to be. Simply for the re- for the fact that they don't want um, anyone else making a rip-off version of what they're doing. Yeah. But yeah, so it does. It takes an enormous amount of work and effort to make a game. It's a lot of work by many, many people generally. Well. Sniper says, I've gone to get funding for the project to see if I can get things to happen faster. Yep. A one-man band is hard. Uh, Sniper says, a one-man band is hard at times. It certainly is. Uh, Making a game on your own is incredibly hard. (laughs) If you're you're the one doing all of the... um, scripting or programming and assets and level design and uh, concept art if you're doing any concept work to promote the game or any advertising to promote the game it, yeah, it is a lot of work for one person uh, again that's why a lot of guys that are one man bands like to do mobile games because even though there's still a lot of work to make a mobile game it's less than making a triple A AAA game uh, so you can generally get it done much more easily on mobile. And again, remember guys, the Unreal Engine can publish to mobile. So um, let's go back into lit mode here. So you have all the tools you need here with the Unreal Engine to actually make a mobile game. Um, um. No, I was just looking at my borders here. Again, pay no attention to the lighting. This is another thing, like I was saying, you're not going to get the look of the light right until I do a rebuild on it. Uh, I do want to make sure, though, that these aren't intersecting the ceiling, so I may just pull them down a little bit. I'm just noticing in areas like here where it looks like it's intersecting the actual mesh behind it. I don't want that, so... Uh, Sniper says, have you heard of PUBG or Player Unknowns? But I certainly have heard of both of them, yep. PUBG is incredibly popular on Twitch at the moment. Uh, I haven't played it, but uh, I know a lot of guys like it. Uh, and actually, that was a, um, a smaller dev team, I think, from memory, that made that game, and it, it's turned into this huge hit. I probably should look at it at some stage. It's a multiplayer game though, I think, isn't it? And I don't generally play multiplayer. Sniper says, uh, I've helped develop the game in a game called Armor 3 mod. Name was uh, Battle Royale. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't, I've never played Armor 3. Again, I'm familiar with it. Uh, I know that Kiori, he's another 3D guy that streams on Twitch, likes playing Armor, um, Armor 3, but I haven't played it, but I've watched guys play it. And that, well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that, Sniper. You're a star. <laughs> um, and if you help develop PUBG, then, yeah, that's incredibly good news. I'm impressed, dude. 
I'll have to uh, look into that a bit more. Uh, same with this one, I just need to pull them down. Yeah, no, I had no idea, Sniper, so yeah, I mean, I am impressed. Uh, and from what I've heard, that PUBG game deserves all the accolades it's getting because like I said, I think it came from a smaller dev team and it's been incredibly popular, so. Sniper says, didn't get the opportunity to work on PUBG, sadly, but uh, they had a Korean team. Oh, okay. That's all right. Your game will be just as popular, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Um, and Sniper says, but the game mechanic came from uh, all our work in armor. Okay. That's really cool. You should be really proud of that then. I think that's excellent. Like I said, you're a star. I didn't know you were such a star. Um, no, that, that's really good news. And I'm sure, like I said, whatever you, you're working on now that you're looking, talking to publishers about and being sponsored for will turn out great as well. Uh, Sniper says, we're great to be, it was great to be involved uh, was great to be involved with and great to see it taking off so well. Yeah, I can imagine that. It'd be amazing. It's always nice when the public like what the work you've done. It's never nice when the public don't. Which is why you guys, like I said, shouldn't be too hard on game guys that make games. Even if they make a bad game, they don't mean to make a bad game. It's just, it's just a time constraint or a finance constraint or, or a, you know, publishers pushing them to to release a, early and things like that. They never intend to make a bad game, so don't don't be too hard on guys that do make bad games, guys. Everybody wants a hit. Uh, Sniper says what I'm working on is a small idea with a view to uh, learning what is needed to make a bigger game. Okay, well that's a good a good way to tackle it. Uh, I've noticed uh, I know. Uh, because I've worked in games development for games companies, I've noticed, uh, and this is even with the people that are employed by games companies, other, other artists, uh, level designers, animators, what, what have you. Um, they try and take on too much too quickly and it, it always ends in disaster because you can't get it all done in time. Uh, so, so focusing in on one small area and getting it done really well is always a great way to go. Now, game companies, they'll, they'll do what they call a, vert a vertical slice, which is like a small section of gameplay, but a complete small section of gameplay to present to a publisher. So they don't try and make the entire game all at once. They just work on uh, uh, a specific part of the game mechanic and they call that a vertical slice, and, but they make sure that they do that properly and that's what they demo to publishers to make the rest of the game uh, and, and even with a vertical slice you've got to be careful you don't start incorporating and getting outside of the um of the focus of what you what you want to create in that vertical slice so and that can be a problem because people have all these ideas that they want to put in uh, and, and, and of course the more ideas you put in and the more things you want to do the longer it's going to take and the more complicated it's going to get so it's always better to start simple and start on a small part of the game and do it and, and get that knocked out well. And then you can use that to get funding to do to get a publisher to fund you to make the rest of the game. Um, yeah. Like I said, they call that the studio I worked at anyway, called it a vertical slice. And that seemed to work well for them. They got they didn't have a problem getting funding from Warner Brothers. So they were the publisher. That was um, that was that Looney Tunes game I worked on. And it helps if you've got a good publisher as well. And Warner Brothers were a great company to work with. They're very nice, nice people to work with. Um, as you guys know, I've worked in film and I've worked for 20th Century Fox as well. Um, less said the better. Let's just put it that way. Not, not that everybody that works for Fox is bad, uh, but there's a certain, there's a, certainly a difference between the way 20th Century Fox has run and the way Warner Brothers has run. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want to be sued, so I'm not going to say anything nasty. They're both great companies, but Warner Brothers are wonderful. M more wonderful. <laughs> All right. 
and I believe Rupert Murdoch owns 20th Century Fox, and I'm and he's Australian by the way, even though he lives in the US now. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with that man. <laughs> Sniper says stream shut down imminent. Yes. Twitch are heading for that big red button to turn it off right now. No. All right, so I think we've got um, that room done, apart from the furniture we want to place in it. Uh, so all I'm going to do then for this room here is, like I said, I'm going to place the, um, the wooden frames around the window and curtains on them. So let's grab one of our wooden frames from inside of our window cavity here. Uh, and this should all be grouped as one um, blueprint, so it's easy for me to duplicate and move. Like I said, if I was making a game, I certainly I'd have to um, make sure I did this room properly. But because we're making a cinematic, it's less important. I just want to make sure that this doesn't stick through the actual glass on the outside. I think we're okay. Yeah. Okay, let's duplicate it and move it to the other windows. Uh, these, the creating a, a blueprint, or I call it a prefab, because it's actually a blueprint of uh, of an object that's made up of a lot of different little objects like this window frame is a, a great addition. I'm glad that Epic put that into the engine because it really does save time. Okay, and uh, we're going to probably have to alter this blueprint a little bit because these windows look like they're a little bit uh, shorter than the ones on the end here. But that's not a big deal. Let's just make sure we line it up properly first and then we can um, make some small adjustments on it. So I'll double click it so I can do a sub object selection and move you up. Yeah. And we'll scale you back a little bit. Okay, it should be all right, I think. Let's duplicate it again for the next window over. Making sure it's not sticking outside. 